Welcome back to the Chef and Seth cast. We're your host, Chef. And I'm Seth. And today we're going to do a little spooky Halloween thing. Ooh. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Is, Can I startle you? Yeah. No, you dude, did. That was scary. Good. I also just realized there's a cat in here. Yeah, I saw that a minute ago. I did not notice if she that. she toots, we're in trouble. Yeah, she is. That's we're in a, a small stinky. room right now. That's a scary thought. Yeah. His cat. Pooped. All right, see you next week. <laughs> Wayne, roll the outro. <laughs> His cat pooped earlier while we were like two rooms away and we could still smell it. Oh, uh, like, it hurt. She's terrible. She's probably the stinkiest cat that's ever existed. And not even like. Oh, yeah, no, that's not exaggeration. No. That's, like, that's pretty fair to say. <laughs> and it lingers. It really does. I don't know what's wrong with her. I've thought about taking her to the vet, um, but I haven't yet. But that's because I'm a terrible owner, but I need to. <laughs> you know, I'm glad we spent the first minute of the Halloween episode talking about cat poop. <laughs> it's scary. <laughs> So, you know, we're just going to talk about, you know, Halloween as a whole. Maybe candy. We'll tell some memories of Halloween from our from our childrenhood. Childrenhood. Our childrenhood. Yep. You want to start? Because you said you have some. I do. I have I have a few. Okay, so, like, when I was younger, I we grew up, well, I guess we can't say we, because you kind of grew up in a different town when you were kind really of. young. <laughs> well, you hopped around. I grew up in Omen, for the um, most part. But I grew up in a really small town, so, like, trick-or-treating was all right, but, like, especially when I got a little older, like, by 9 or 10, less and less house did it every year. So, um, it was kind of hard to be able to get, like, a substantial amount of candy. So, my mom, what she used to do is we would do something called speed treating, and, uh, she would take us, she had, like, a minivan, and all the kids in my family would all get in my mom's van, and she'd, like, pull up to the house like we were about to rob it, and we'd hop out, sprint to the door, trick-or-treat, get some candy, jump back in the van, and go to the next house, and just keep going around town. We'd do two or three towns in a night, and we'd have, like, a buttload of candy. That's that's kind of smart, but... It really is. I feel like part of the magic of Halloween is walking out, getting too cold, and at least somebody crying. <laughs> yeah, I love crying. <laughs> I'm not saying I love it. I'm just saying I felt like there was always at least one kid that was like, I don't want to walk anymore. <laughs> You're not supposed to say that kind of stuff. <laughs> I uh, One Halloween memory I have is when I was like, I think I was turning eight. Uh, it was that year. I had always had like, goofier costumes mm -hmm. like i remember one year i was luigi one year i was mario <laughs> one year i was the ninja I and was then luigi again <laughs> <laughs> i like luigi <laughs> let's talk but... about luigi <laughs> <laughs> we're not doing the halloween episode anymore <laughs> my uh stepdad at the time was you know he talked to my mom and he's like he needs more boy costumes like luigi he needs something <laughs> a little more that you'd see, like, a boy dress up as. So they got me a zombie costume, mm -hmm. and I wore the clothes, but I couldn't wear the mask because it scared me. <laughs> so I just walked around in, like, tattered clothing for, like, two hours. <laughs> I'm homeless for Halloween. <laughs> Give me your chickens. <laughs> you have any restaurant-style meals? Could I sleep on your couch? <laughs> uh, That's you, a good memory. Well, you know... Kind of. <laughs> I was that, and I'm allergic to latex, and the whole mask was made of latex. Yeah, that's yeah, that's rough. I think that's what negated a lot of possible Halloween costumes for me. Mm -hmm. Was because like every Halloween mask for kids is made out of rubber and latex. <laughs> I had a lot of my Halloween costumes kind of limited as well because I grew up in a Christian household, mm. and we didn't like the like the demonic slash scary side of Halloween, so we usually focused on just dressing up as something fun yeah, and being with family, stuff like that. So, And I still kind of uphold that tradition. I don't trick-or-treat anymore, but <laughs> I don't know if, I had, if I had old. a kid, <laughs> that's what I would kind of uphold to anyway. But I, I remember my first, the first Halloween I remember, I was Donald Duck, and mm. then I was Stitch. And then, like, I'd say the edgiest I probably ever got was, like, a ninja. I was a ninja one Halloween. 
one Halloween. I was a ninja for like seven Halloweens because ninjas were the bomb. But, <laughs> and Halloween was every single day. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in Transylvania, Romania. <laughs> no, I uh, did a lot of ninjas and uh, it was a lot of fun. I, I, I didn't feel like I had to have uh, blood all over my face. <laughs> I didn't, yeah. And like I couldn't do... I couldn't do a lot of costumes. I, I'm trying to remember more costumes I did. I know I was Freddy Krueger one year. Let's talk then, more recent Halloween. Like, more recent Halloween? Yeah, like Halloweens. We, we've, in the past few <laughs> we've Halloweens... We've celebrated Halloween the past couple of years. <laughs> yeah, with the exception of this one coming up. We've yeah. had a party at my house every Halloween, okay? Yeah. The first Halloween here, what do you remember? Not much. Uh, <laughs> um, I we remember the lives. first. Yeah, I, we. Yeah, man. Back then, it's crazy to say that, but like we would party wild. I remember the first Halloween though. We did. We went like all out with lights and like ghosts hanging everywhere. Was that when you got the giant beard and wig? Giant beard and wig. No, that was last year. I thought last year was the the dad slash. Oh, you're right, man. That was two years ago then. Yeah, because... Because well, last year we were stepdads half the night. Yeah, and then the other half then, were the frat guys, which yeah. the costumes are more similar than you'd imagine. That was I looked like a history teacher when I was a stepdad. <laughs> like, specifically a history teacher we had. <laughs> I was bald when we did that. Uh... I oh, yeah. I stuck, like, a bigger sweater in my sweater to give me a tummy, and I put on a pair of, like, Nike Air Forces, and uh, I kept my cargo shorts on, but then, like, I buttoned my button up all the way and put on, like, a net hat. I looked like a suburban stepdad. Yeah, and to turn into a frat guy, all you have to do is unbutton the shirt and like backwards halfway. the hat. <laughs> yeah, that's, that was it. That's it. Like, I left the socks... And, like, because I had, like, knee-high socks, I left those, like... And then the year before that, you had the wig. And long hair. And then the year before that, I was uh, Lloyd from Dumb and Dumber. I just used my prom Oh, outfit. yeah, you had the orange yeah tuxedo thing. What were you for these Halloweens? The Last year, you were stepdad and frat guy. Right? I was stepdad and frat guy uh, two years ago, so the one where you were Lloyd, I was a cop. No, that was three years ago. Cause oh, that, yeah, that's what I meant. Three years ago, the one where you were Lloyd. Yeah. yeah I was a cop. Um, and then last year, or two years ago, what was I? Oh, I was, I was uh, oh, man, Johnny Bravo. That's right. Yeah, I, like, got my hair, like, spray dyed. Yeah. With, like, the spray. The fake, like, Dollar General stuff. <laughs> yep. And I wore sunglasses and had a tight black t-shirt and uh, some jeans on. Yeah. Yeah, that was a, I, that was fun. I'm like, I there's a part of me that misses our party era, mm -hmm. and it's crazy to think that at the age that we are, you miss the fun. You don't miss all the drama. Yeah, because there was always some sort of drama. Yeah, it usually it didn't. I don't think it really ever did start because of us, but mm -hmm. us trying to solve it would get yeah. us into it. We were like the the watchers. Yeah. Or slash um, dads or whatever, very, trying to keep the, a the lid on things. And it didn't always work that way. No, no because I remember the one year we had two people here who were a couple, mm -hmm. and our buddy from the army was home, and he was trying. He had got very drunk very fast, and he tried to like calm up. Excuse Just me. go ahead and calm throw down up. <laughs> an argument between the couple, and like, no, he was trying to help them move the air mattress upstairs, mm -hmm. and in the process, he like rammed the dude's girlfriend with the air mattress. Yeah, <laughs> and so the guy tried. To... He's a goofy and clumsy he is... guy. He's like six four and he's lanky, so he's like very unintentionally stumbly, <laughs> uh, especially when he drinks like that. But like. The other guy tried to fight him, because, you know, he hit the guy's girlfriend in the face with an air mattress. Yeah. I mean, kind of justified. Like, yeah. And, uh... Don't beat up my girlfriend, please, thanks. Yeah. And so I tried to pull our army buddy back, and he, like... Dude. You wouldn't think it by looking at him, because he is very, he is very like, skin, skinny build, yeah. 
But he, like, picked me up by the neck and threw me across the kitchen. And I just laid there for a minute and I was like, alright, this is no longer my issue. <laughs> <laughs> he like, just got back and walked and lived. <laughs> I what? Mad. I said 40 words in a half a second. He just got back up and walked into the living room like it was nobody's issue. Yeah, like, I, I wasn't dealing with that anymore. <laughs> he hit the cupboard, fall down, and you're like, all oh, right. Well, Let's... <laughs> that was crazy, huh? Go somewhere else now. And then uh, I fell out of it. No, this wasn't a Halloween party. I fell out of the tree. That was the blacklight one. Oh, yeah. I yeah. Uh, fell out of a tree that night. Yep, yeah, that's, a, that's a different story, but. He, he went up a tree and then he went down. <laughs> I went down a lot faster than I went up. <laughs> I'd be surprised if you went up faster. <laughs> I uh, I do remember like three of the girls. Like I went into the house without my shirt on, uh, because Hot. I was in pain. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I walked into the kitchen and the three of them, the three girls were coming out of the bathroom, and mm. I walk in the kitchen and all I hear is, "Oh my goodness!" And I'm like what and they're like your back is covered in blood and i was like no it's not and they're like no it is and they like held me down in the bathroom and peroxided my back <laughs> and it hurt <laughs> it turned into gray's anatomy real quick <laughs> they pulled out my appendix i almost didn't make it <laughs> it was a pretty good time uh, uh, yeah that was a rough party i mean it wasn't bad like at first no i the first party we ever had here so like Nick and what I was weren't partiers one? when we were in high school. No. But... We got it all out very quick. <laughs> yeah. The first, the first party we had here, I was, like, I wasn't a party hub of our town. Like, so I knew that if I invited anybody, like, nobody would show up. So instead, I was like, I'm going to invite people, like, a month in advance and make them <laughs> accept or deny my request. So I remember I made a Facebook group. Oh, that's right. And it had like 40 people in it and like 20, like 25 of them said that they were coming. And I even invited people I wasn't super comfortable with inviting just so we could have like bodies. Yeah. Um, and that led to a lot more people being here than I expected because all these people who didn't know who I was very well also invited people that they were more comfortable with. So we ended up having like 40 people here and this is a very small house. It is. And we had that one goober who showed up with one of the girls and one of my friends that we invited. And he just, like, walks in. He's like, hey, can I take one of those frozen pizzas? And Seth was like, sure. And then he left. Yep. That's it. <laughs> he just came to the house, grabbed a pizza, and went. <laughs> like, he didn't say hi to anybody. He didn't get a drink. He just kind of, like... Um, I didn't even know he was there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't know who he was. I'm still curious to this day, so if you're listening to this, what's your name? <laughs> I know he had a blonde mullet, but then again, so many people do that now. Yeah, uh, it was it was weird. I, like, turned around, and he's like, hey, man. I'm like, That's... hey, who are you? <laughs> he's like, can I have one of your pizzas? I'm like, sure. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, like, toasted at this point, yeah. so it, it's really easy to talk me into taking my pizza. I think... That's when we put the kibosh on, like, open that invitation. Kibosh. Yeah. And, like, just being like, okay, we don't have, like, a lot of close friends, but we have intermediate friends, so we'll invite them. Yeah. I mean, we and made some pretty... friends from that party. Yeah. Like Kimbo. Yeah. They were pretty stable parties after that. Well, yeah. not stable, but they were not 40 people. Yeah, they are maybe, maybe 20 people. and uh, But they we, were always good. They were always close friends, and we had a good time. Um, and yeah. it's just crazy to think how much our lives have changed. Yeah, because it would always be like, you'd have that party, and then like you'd wake up, and either everybody left early, or and we don't advise this, we don't encourage it, or people would leave that night. Mm -hmm. And you'd wake up, and there'd be like six people left, and Seth would come down and be like, "You guys hungry?" And then he'd make breakfast for everybody. Yeah, I'm a sweetheart. And there was the one party where we had our one of our friends from Rochester. And, uh, the one, her, she brought a friend who got very sick that night, and the next morning, she was given a Gatorade, and I had to leave, and right before I left, I decided to do a very charitable thing, and I wrapped her Gatorade in, in a, a condom. condom. <laughs> yeah. 
And very charitable. From what I heard, she had a struggle getting into it. <laughs> because she was very nauseous. I, if I remember correctly, the whole premise behind that was to make her throw up. Like, we were trying to hope that she would touch it and, like, be grossed out. And yeah. then have her stomach nastiness <clears throat> take over and have her throw up. But she didn't. No. Not in, like, a malicious manner. No. And but a she goofy had... throw up on your friend's manner. <laughs> <laughs> I will We definitely didn't abide by a lot of, like stereotypical party rules because if you were to see them from the outside it was loud music it was always lights a lot of people a lot of alcohol so you'd think it you'd think like this is a party mm-hmm. but it wasn't no bogus like fist fights no drawing on people like we didn't do that yeah there was and there's never been a fight i mean there was one one time we had a neighbor there pop two by times. yeah but the first time specifically they they a neighbor who liked to drink and party popped by and they uh they seemed like they were kind of trying to cause some stuff but at the same time they seemed like they were trying to be friends or like three of them two of them were nice one of them was like trying to be big old macho man yeah so that that was kind of weird they were like in their 50s the yeah the couple was in their 50s and they're like i don't know brother whatever it was is yeah. like in their his 40s or something along those lines i don't know i remember at those parties, I used to get something going that Seth <laughs> would always oh end up gosh. the butt of. If you've never heard of the game of life while you're drinking, what it is is you go up to somebody. If the tab on their beer is normal and it's open, you tap it, say the game of life, and they have to chug their drink. But your tab has to be sideways. And if both of yours are sideways, you both have to chug. Um, and if yours isn't and theirs is, you have to chug. But every time someone would walk in the door, I would explain the game to them. Be like, go get Seth. That or, like, he'd be drunk and he'd be like, Nick, can you grab me a beer? And I'd be like, yeah. And, like, I'd pull it out of the fridge and he'd be like, wait! And then I'd be like, dink, game of life. <laughs> I hated that game. <laughs> the one night, he we did it to him so much that he, like, he had blacked out, went to bed for, like, an hour, and then all we hear is, and he broke something off of something, and it's in his hands, and he just joined back in the party like he had never gone to bed. I broke this. <laughs> I I could hear him waking up, though, so I put a flannel and sunglasses on him before he came down. <laughs> yeah, I was the coolest cat at the party. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we hope you guys enjoyed this Halloween parties episode. Um, Seth, anything to add? Um, happy Halloween. Be safe, and Doom. have a good time. Uh, don't let people put Doom 1998 in your kids' candy. Oh, boy. Yeah, so. it's a dangerous one. Yeah, <laughs> have a good one. <laughs>